Hello, welcome back to Rust 101. This is video 32, I think. Uh, we are running through the exercises on module D, uh, which was all about trait objects and Rust patterns. Mostly we, we've been doing patterns so far. I think number three might do a bit of trait object stuff. Um, but then we did do a bit of practical stuff in the, in the video explaining trait objects. So, uh, that might help if you're stuck on that stuff. Okay. So another pattern is the type state pattern. So um, we're imagining a 3D printer, which um, prints things in 3D, and it can be in various states. So presumably it starts off in the idle state, and then it could be it could start, and then it would be printing, and then the product could be ready, or there could be an error, and then when you reset it, it can go back to idle state, and when the product's ready, you can like remove the product, and then it goes back to the idle state as well. So pretty simple set of states. As it says that it boots in idle state when it's done and it's print once it started it enters printing state in printing state it keeps on printing if it's out of filament it goes into error state you can only get out of that by resetting product ready user tricks right okay it's just what I said the printer can be represented in Rust using the type state pattern this allows you to write a simple 3D printer driver I mean that's <laughs> fine <laughs> um, so we're going to have some code which uh, includes a printer 3D struct and we need to add methods that correspond to the traits and simulate that state transition by printing the state. A method simulating checking for the printer of filament is provided. And you can add more if you like. Alright, so let's go back to our diagram and let's go to the right directory um, like so and then just open it up have a look at the code. So we can run cargo test in here just to see what happens. And ignore my error, errors from my editor. Um, okay, so what have we got? We've got a thing called a printer 3D, uh, which contains phantom data so that we can have this S, which is the state. And there's a whole load of possible states here, error state, idle state, and so on. As a way of checking we're out of filament. So I guess what we want is some kind of test, right? We always want a test. So Kofog test mod tests. Let's write ourselves a test. Uh, which is going to be something like printer starts in idle state, let's say. Printer starts in idle state. So let's just instantiate ourselves a 3D printer. So what's it called? Printer 3D. Because you can't start with a number, so you can't call it a 3D printer. So let P equal printer 3D. Let we, I guess we're imagining there's a new method. Um, and I guess it's as simple as saying the type of that is going to be printer 3D um, idle state. And that's kind of it. Like if that type checks, um, then let's bring in some stuff here. Um, if that type of check, type checks, then it must be okay. Now there's no new method yet, so let's create one. So we're going to do an impl printer 3D. I think what we want, I think what we had in the example on the slides was that you, you provide an impl block, um, in, which, which is, which is for the, like, starting state. And then you just return an instance of self. We need to provide the marker struct, like so. And it doesn't like it because, why doesn't it like it? Outer filament is not used, P is not used, and New is not used. Well, new is used, but it's only used in test code. So let's write ourselves a some kind of public function which just uses all the f methods so we don't get these annoying warnings. 
So if it's a public function, Rust doesn't know it's not going to get used from somewhere else, so it's okay with it. Right, public function, use methods. Well, let's say um, go through states. And maybe we don't need a test because maybe this is going to effectively be our test because our test is all going to be testing stuff that happens at compile time. So let p equal... No, well, let's let's be explicit about the types. So it's going to be a printer 3D of idle state equals printer 3D new. Right, now, so you might be asking, like, how, how would this test fail? So let's 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 assume for now that we don't need these tests because this um, this one method is going to do all of our work. Um, so the way that this test would fail would be if we'd done this wrong. Um, for example, if we'd done error state here, then our code wouldn't compile because it says it returns an error state, but you're saying it should be an idle state. Now, interestingly. If we made it like um, generic, I think our test probably still would pass. Yeah, but later that's going to fail. So for now, we can live with that. Now, when you're in an idle state, what can you do? Well, the only things you can do are start. So let's have a start method. This is a method, not an associated function. New was an associated function because it didn't take self. And this is going to return a printer which is no longer in the idle state. It's going to be in the printing state. Like so. Notice, by the way, that these um, states don't implement any kind of trait or anything like that. Um, you, what we could do is kind of constrain the states that this could be in by adding some kind of thing like, um, I don't know, print, some kind of trait called printer state. And then all of these would have to implement print state, and then you would know you'd have more clarity about exactly which, um, like what possible states a printer can be in. All right, so it's going to take in not a reference to self; it's going to actually use up self. So let's write our code that uses this. So we can say p dot start, but actually we want to say let and again it's going to be a printer 3D but it's going to be a different start different state so it's going to be in oh, what was it? printing state like so and again the compiler is going to check that our code is right doesn't like this because um, we haven't actually done it so we're going to need to say What if we just said phantom data? Is that going to work? Yeah. So it knows that we mean phantom data of printing state, I guess. Is that how this works? Printing. Um, I think, yeah, it, it's figuring out that that's what we meant. Um, and it's just doing it for us, so we don't need to put it in. Okay, so now we've got a, a printer 3D which is in printing state. Now what possible states can happen there? You can either be out of filament or you can be product ready. So I guess we want a method to say, um, how are we going to use this out of filament method? Um, we, uh, we could either just say here, if, I guess we want to say like, uh, like check whether it's finished or whether it's out of filament, and then we'll get back a different type. That won't work, will it? Um, we could say we let's let's play with the idea. So I think what they want us to do is just say if out of filament do blah. But what if we said p dot uh, check finished or something like that? Um, and this is either going to return. Um, how do you think about this? It's either going to return a product ready or an error. Yeah. So, 
how are we going to do that? Well, we'll have it return a result. So let r equal check finished. P dot check finished. Now r is going to be, we won't put the type of r in, but we'll add a method. So this is going to be a method on printer 3D brackets printing state. So it's not going to be a method on idle state. So you won't be able to call um, uh, this new method we're writing on an idle printer. So let's just demonstrate that. If I say here, which we've got an idle printer here, if I say here, check whether this idle printer is finished, it's going to say no, there's no method check finished on that. Uh, well, it says there's no method there, right? So we better might write a method to make this clear. So we're going to write, write a function check finished, takes in a self, and it returns a result, which could be one of two things. If everything's okay, it's going to return a printer 3D, which is in um, product ready state, or it's going to, if ever, something went wrong, it's going to return a printer 3D, which is in error state. Like so. I think this is going to work, but you know, if I'm wrong, we'll find out. So we're going to say if, uh, what is it called? Out of filament, then we it's an error. Otherwise, it's all good. We're finished. I mean, this obviously is not realistic because there would be a state of like, I'm still working on it, but yeah, we won't have that. So this is going to be a printer 3D. Um, I guess, again, we can just put in this and it'll just work it out, I think. Because we've given it the types. In our type signature, we've told it what these types of these phantom datas are going to be. So it just figures it out for us. So yeah, now look, we can call check finished on a printer that's in printing state, but not on a printer that's in idle state, because the method is implemented inside this input block, this printing state input block. It's not implemented in this idle state input block. That's the whole point of this pattern. That you, you can only call methods that make sense for the state that your thing is in. Yeah, we're definitely not going to use these tests. Um, okay, so now we've got a result. And we can break it up. Um, so either everything went well, in which case um, we have a P, which is in uh, product ready state. Or there was an error. Also, oh, we want to match on. We want to match on R. Match on R. So either in OK, or P, where the P is in ready state, or it's going to be an error. Oh, that's not how comments work. Um, or there's going to be an error, which also gives us back a P. So this is a little unusual. Um, Uh, to put, return like a full object in both cases, but I think it works for us. So I guess what we want to do is do some, write some code in here that uses our p. So if p is in um, error state, then we're going to need to, I guess we'll print an error or something. Oh, we're supposed to print out our states, aren't we? Um, and then we should, we should say reset our printer. If we are in product ready state, then we want to retrieve product. P dot retrieve product. Something like that. Um, oh, I'm missing a comma, that's why it's not formatting for us, I think. Not sure. Somehow our formatting is not kicking in because there's some problem, but we'll get there. All right, so we don't have retrieve product. And we don't have reset, but you can see already our error messages are telling us we need a retrieve product on something that's in product ready state and we need a reset on something that's in error state. So let's implement those. Printer 3D, um, product ready state should re re provide a function retrieve product, which takes in a self again, consuming that P. 
um, and returning a new one, printer 3D, which is in idle state. Um, and again, the actual code of this is just the same, like all the methods have just got the same implementation. Um, now, you would probably do other work in here um, when you did this. Um, otherwise, this would all be a little pointless. So if we're in an error state, we're going to have a method that looks very similar to this called reset. Uh, and that's going to return something which is also in idle state. Interesting. They both get back to idle state, meaning we can um, get back a P here and both halves of our OK and both halves of our match return the same type. So the type of P is please tell me the type of P. The type of, well, we can declare it. The type of P is a printer 3D in idle state. And if we'd written this code correctly, so these get returned, then we'd get back, indeed, a P in idle state, which we can then call something else on. So let's call it, let's just call p.start again, just to demonstrate. So, um, we haven't printed out what we're doing, so let's print some stuff out. Um, I guess, what should we do? Let's just have each method say, what does it say we should do? It says we should print out, by simulate the state transitions by printing the state. So let's just print out the name of the method, shall we? That'll do. Like so. Is that good enough? We know that start, maybe we, ideally maybe we'd print out, um, um, like the beginning state and ending state. Let's just say out of filament here, and let's just say um, what, what is the state transition called? Product ready here. Product ready. Let's just make these. These aren't method names, so let's name them differently. And then. Uh, this should just print retrieve product. Now this would be really good if we can run this from a main method, so let's try and do that in a second. Retrieve product and reset. Okay, so let's have ourselves a main method. So let's create a new file called main and um, I think we just make a fun main. First of all, let's just check that that works at all. Uh, cargo run. Yeah, hello world works. So let's try running our function, which is called go through states. Go through states. Now, can't find that because we need to um, import. Um, the, oh, what's the name of the, this crate? Uh, what well, we're in? The, all right, let's look at cargo.com and see what the name of the crate is. Printer dash three D. So that is, I think we need in here. Use printer underscore three D. Go through states. Maybe. Yeah, it looks like that works. Okay, so it's called printer dash 3D. That means its module name has changed to an underscore. When we run it, it says new start, check finished, products ready. So we retrieve the product and we're back to start. We'll run it again. And hopefully sometimes it will run out of filament. There we go. And now it says check finished, out of filament, and resets it and goes back to the start. So everything's working as we expect. I believe that's all we need to do for this exercise.
That was exercise D2. Thanks for watching. See you next time for exercise D3.